All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, happy to be talking to an individual set to fight at BKFC Fight Night Tampa 2, the interim Bantamweight Championship, up for grabs on July 23rd. Well, not up for grabs, Jared Grant defending the title, but Reggie Barnett Jr. getting in there, knuckling up, toeing the line, and looking to buy for some Bantamweight hardware once again, and always fun getting to chop it up a little bit with Reggie. How are you doing there, man? I'm doing good, man. Just, you know me, hard work, dedication, and trying to prepare myself the best I can and just, I went five and a half, six weeks a game. Yeah, and you seem very, like we were even talking before the call, just very involved in your community there. I saw an effort you were, you know, helping out with there, the auction for, you know, the Justice for Corey Hunter Foundation. Like, how's that been going there? That seems like a noble cause you're helping out with. So, um, I spoke with, I guess, Corey's widow and his former mother-in-law and they're going to do the necessary legal paperwork to um, have the foundation started in their name and then they're going to take my sneakers and auction them off to be, I guess, a part of the first initial donation for the foundation. So they're in another event, what is it, July 2nd, um, that I'm going to speak at about, um, you know, anti-gun violence and just, you know, people who've lost ones to gun violence and haven't had any justice yet. So, and I think that's when we're going to officially launch everything in July, so, which is right before my birthday. Um, which is, you know, super excited to just uh, be able to support them, you know, get Corey's story out there a little bit and support other people. So, it is a real issue, and it's sad to say, especially in certain parts of the Hampton Road community. So I just want to make sure that the people whose voices aren't heard uh, and the people whose ears haven't been rung yet are aware of what's going on. Well, that must give you a certain level of, you know, power just in the sense of you have your own platform to shine a spotlight on those kind of things, whereas, you know, maybe certain people don't have that kind of spotlight because yeah you don't want anything like that to be you know swept under the rug like that needs to be like at the forefront of people's focus and like that stuff shouldn't be happening yeah definitely you know um and they've been trying for a while and um it's always about the bigger picture for me sometimes i forget that and so and this gives me an opportunity to help like i said his family out and not just them but i'm sure there are thousands of other people out there who just want to be heard, their story shared, and you know, some type, find some kind of peace. But Corey was one of my biggest fans, one of my best supporters. I don't think I would be, I know it's crazy to say, uh, in the position that I'm in in life, had he not been put in my life for the time that he was. And um, uh, I just want people. Uh, he was taken from us um, in an unjust form of fashion. And the person who essentially took his life has been free for the last four years with no trial, no you know, hearing, or whatever. We just want... responsible for it be held accountable in some form of action for that action. and that's all we really want and if I can use my platform not just for Corey but for other people and use what I'm doing as far as my fighting then I will Yeah, that's something that I've always thought to be very cool about you. Like, you're a, you know, fiercely loyal sort of guy. Like, I think that even radiates through, like, the connection you've had with your dad over the years and just the amazing gym culture you guys have curated with, like, you know, 757 and stuff like that. So I imagine that, you know, it's, like, a great measure of pride for you and stuff like that, just, like, a lineage that keeps growing and adding chapters to the story. So it's pronounced 757 boxing. Um, It's, like, the area code that we're in which is about to change, but it's not really about the numbers of the area code, it's about the atmosphere and, and the family. Um, we have champions from eight, six to eight years old to 
soon to be me, 36 years old. So, <laughs> um, but it's more about the gym culture and the family and knowing that not just fighting, but, you know, us in 757, we got your back. We're going to stand up for you. We're going to stand up for our community in any way, shape, form, or fashion. And it doesn't have to be just about throwing hands or, you know, putting on some gloves. Um, that's what I love about our youth. Um, and that's what I love about just our parents that are involved, and not just our gym, but our, our whole LBC and our local boxing community. And it'll radiate, you know. It, you know um, what do you say? A pebble in the water it makes waves. So we're going to continue to put in the work, and I'm going to continue to go out there and show out, you know, as a, Jesus said, I'm going to put on for my city on the 23rd. I'm super excited and super stoked to be able to just punch somebody in the face and mean it and not get in trouble for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like it's been a little bit of you kind of waiting for that next opportunity. It seemed like you were getting a little stir crazy based on what I was seeing on some social media posts. And it seemed like at one point there was some discourse about maybe being part of like a you know, a flyweight kind of tournament and stuff like that. Like, how did we get to this point? Like, what was that whole timeline like? Was there that level of frustration? What happened with flyweight? How did we get here? Well, you know, after August, um, no, I kind of just, I guess, got lazy, got complacent in a dark place for a little while. I wasn't really training. Uh, just kind of meandering and being a dad, I suppose. And I, I always say, you know, I can wear both hats if I want. I want to. I can put on my coach's hat. And I think I was wearing out my coach's hat and using an excuse not to get off my ass and, you know, stop wallowing in what really wasn't failure in anybody's eyes but my own. You know, um, a fight's a fight, a win's a win, a loss a loss. It's how you move forward and how you react to it afterwards. And, most of the time, I've been good at getting back on my feet, and it took a little longer after that last one. Um, but moving forward, you know, I was like, well, I want to go to my weight where I know I'm truly comfortable. Maybe it's just in my mind, you know, Johnny, she's too big. You know, we went at it twice. I hit that man with everything with the kitchen sink, and he still just looked at me and hit me as hard as he could. You know, so... Um, <laughs> much respect to him. I, I mean, go back and watch. I would hit him bing, 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 and then he would hit me once. Bow! <laughs> and not making any excuses. Both The first fight, he went my ass. The second fight, I do believe, was a lot closer than what some people had it. So water under the bridge. I felt like maybe 125 would be better for me. That's close to where I was boxing. That's where my boxing titles are. You know, 126, 128, maybe 130. Um, so Dave said, you know, we could possibly do a flyweight tournament. And, you know, I was given a date, and then that date got pushed back, and I was given another date, and I heard nothing. And then I was given another date, and that date changed, and I was a little frustrated, you know, I was watching other guys. And, and like Dave said, you know, he said I could box. You know, he gave me his blessing to box and said, you know, he just had to approve the opponent, so... We brought back one opponent, and um, he approved it, and then the guy didn't want to fight me. So we brought back another opponent, and they were a little, um, I, I really don't know. My mom just said, my man just said, that fight's just not going to happen. Um, and so I kind of just sat on the sidelines, watching guys get MMA fights and boxing matches, and, uh, and I'm like, dang, I just, you know, I want to feed my family. I want to fight. I'm not getting any younger. And so we tried to line up a couple more boxing matches. Let's see. One guy was 11 and 1. He didn't want to fight me. Uh, another guy was 13 and 0. He didn't want to fight me. And then the only guy who wanted to fight me was 19 and 0. There was no way in hell that Dave was approving that fight. <laughs> I was about it, you know, I told my mom, I said, I'll take the fight, let's go to California, you know, uh, but, yeah, and so, you know, you just get answers, it's, you know, fighting for me is also partially there, it, it's great to go in the gym and spar and hit the bag and hit the pads, and, you know, all that stuff, but, you know, it, 
there's a difference between doing all that and actually actively getting there and competing. And when my time is done, it's done. But I know that I have a, a cap on that, and I want to utilize myself and my skills and what I've learned and what I've been holding my entire life before that that time gets there. There's no fighter. I don't care who you are, and not run father time. And some try to, and some are okay at it, and some try to and completely destroy their lives. I'm not going to be the guy trying to outrun father time, but still I want my opportunities to fight while I'm still, I guess, in my prime or my decline or whatever the hell they want to call it. Some people say I'm just now in my prime, and some people say I'm on my decline. I don't really care. I'm a fighter through and through. I work hard, I train hard every day, and whenever I get in there to fight, whether I win, lose, or draw, somebody is leaving bloody. Go back and watch all eight of my fights. <laughs> I say there will be blood, and there's always blood. So. <laughs> yeah, I know you got a proven track record for bringing it, but you touched on a lot of very interesting things that I wanted to, you know, kind of like have you expound upon potentially. Like you were talking about being in a period where you felt like it was like almost like dark a little bit like there was a certain sense of complacency was there like an epiphany moment where you realized that was going on and started to like amend the behavior there or was it a gradual realization of like i need to shore some things up to get back to peak form um i want to say there was a little bit of both um i went to new york earlier this year and it just it hit me like being there the first time when I went to do my first seminar and then going back up there for the for the amateur bare knuckle tryout and then doing my seminar and knowing that I really hadn't been putting in the same work that I was when I did that first seminar and like in my heart I felt the half assness of it. If I can just be blunt. And it, it weighed on me and that's just not who I I know I'm capable and I can always do better and I am better than that and it's a matter of why was I going to make that decision to just you know I guess wallow in my shit or climb out the pit again and hose myself off and start climbing up that hill uh I can't ever stay down. I'm too stupid to stay down. You've seen my fight. I'm too dumb to stay down in my own room. So it's about just keeping moving forward. And so that's what I wanted to do. And like I said, I started training my ass off again, and getting ready so I wouldn't have to, you know. So I was ready when they called my name, thinking that any month I was going to get a fight. And it just didn't manifest itself. And when you're looking at a year layoff, I, I make decent money fighting, <laughs> but I'm not no, I guess, whatever million dollar fighter or whatever. So uh, I still need to fight. I'm a prize fighter. That's what I do. And if that's my expertise, I would rather do that. And I enjoy my day job. Um, I worked really, really hard from the very bottom of the ladder to be one of the top guys in not just my company, but the entire area where I live doing what I do. So I don't mind my job, but my expertise is fighting. And I would like to practice my expertise. And you touched on something that, you know, I wanted to kind of get into as well. Like you were talking about like the bare knuckle tryouts and just some of the different like seminars you've been doing and stuff like that. I mean, you got that educated hands moniker being applied to you know other people's technique and approach in real time there like how gratifying is it for you to do that you strike me as a guy that very much enjoys the teaching aspect like we we're talking about 757 and like the gym culture and things like that but just in the context of like the teaching of technique it seems like something you very much enjoy so you know how do you feel like engaging in those seminars and like i said the educated hands moniker being brought to life i love it like i have like I said, you know, where I get to wear both those hats, but it's like, which one are you going to wear, you know, for the time being? And I love teaching. It is a second passion of mine. I love teaching fighting because it helped me also grow as a fighter myself. But at 
the same time, I'm still a fighter. So when it's time to reel that back in, I have to. But to see other people practicing and using, you know, what me and my team develop within the sport of bare knuckle. And then I've seen a couple of Muay Thai fights where I'm like, yo, that was my clinch move. Like, all day. There's no way that, you know, not to, like, toot my own horn or brag or anything like that in that sense, but, like, damn right. And I have I, I have put a stamp on the combat sports community. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you still there? Oh yeah, no, sorry. It sounded like the call kind of dropped out there. I didn't, I didn't know you'd wrapped up there, but I wanted to. I wasn't, I wasn't sure either. <laughs> I was like, Hold on. I would pause. No, you know, for and that was what it was really what I set out to do. Um, in any fashion, when I told my dad when we first started this whole bare knuckle thing, I said, Dad, you know, I could go down and history might win a world championship as a boxer or blah blah blah. There's hundreds of boxing world champions out of existence, but within the bounds of bare knuckle, I have left my stamp on not just bare knuckle, but other combat sports, and and it it will continue to grow. Um, The brand, you know, and the moniker will resonate throughout the bare knuckle community and the combat sports community for generations to come. I absolutely know. I have built my own um, when I'm done, I'm going to be what Royce Grace is when you get to the battle. Yeah, and it seems like the pride from your dad is very, you know, present for sure. Like when you got the chance to compete on the first legal bare knuckle boxing event in well over a hundred years and, you know, now poised to bring home some hardware there. Like, I mean, I think that would be a really cool capstone to kind of bring home and show around a little bit i would think do you let yourself think of different moments like that or is there just like the hyper focus on you know the task at hand and you can't even think of those like you know what could happen after the fact if you get the ideal outcome kind of scenarios you know your brain i don't care who you are or what human being at any point your brain you know always goes to that that moment past your glory or greatness or whatever but it's important to dial yourself back in for me anyway, I can't speak for anybody else, for me to dial myself back in and focus on the task at hand, you know, and, and be prepared to my best so that when it is time to perform, uh, I can get whatever outcome that my subconscious mind or brain or even my conscious mind is, is looming towards. But it's important to keep that focus and not live in, I guess, the the foreseeable future that isn't there yet, but you know you still have work to do to get to. Yeah, for sure. And then just speaking to that specific, you know, task at hand, just getting ready to fight Jared Grant here. I'm kind of curious, like, what your thoughts on his general body of work so far have been, because he's got that, you know, 80% finishing rate so far, has yet to taste defeat. He did go the distance last time in the bout where he captured gold there like what are your thoughts on like what he's shown just like his stylistic proclivities and just like what he brings to the table as a fighter um Garrett is a really skilled boxer um I give him credit uh if he you let him dictate the pace he'll do what initially I you know came into sport doing which is you know outboxing people um but this is fair knuckle fighting and I can fight both. I feel like I'm a better boxer than him, but I'm an incredibly better than a knuckle fighter. And there's a difference between the two. And it took me a while, you know, even within the sport, for that switch to go off with you know. And, like, shit, in the last Bedford fight, I forgot that I was a bare knuckle fighter for a second day at the beginning of the fight. And then y'all saw the switch go off, and it, it turned away from me trying to outbox him to a bare knuckle fight back and he trying to outbox him and then I had to hit the switch and get like hold up you know, it's not boxing that shit. but um, I take nothing away from Jared he's, he's a great fighter I don't think he's truly truly been tested yet um, I think for me I am his biggest test and I think for myself 
against them. It's, um, it's not a test. It's a, a question mark. So are you still where you need to be, where you want to be? So, uh, are you fading out? I mean, that's just a question I really have to ask myself. And so I'm putting my all into it. So when it's time for that question to be answered, at least I know that no matter what the outcome is, I'm leaving everything in that square circle as I always have. It's just who I am. And I'm not worried about no titles or no belt or any of that. And I'm, I'm going back to the Reggie that came into the first bare knuckle fighting championships who was just excited to be there and wanted to have fun and wanted to be an good this fight. You know, before it turned into the whole business aspect of it and, you know, all the extra stuff, which I don't mind, but at the same time, it's about having fun. I spend hours in the gym. I leave days of sleep in between days, you know, preparing myself. So the moment is just solely focused on, oh, I got to win this title. I got to win this belt. It's being appreciative of the gifts that God has given me for him not giving up on me when I was wallowing in my crap and allowing me to prepare myself to go out there and, and put on for, like I said, put on for my city, put on for my fans, put on for my loved ones, and enjoy what I love to do the most, which is fight, <laughs> beat people up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm coming. I, he already knows. It's a different pace. I, yeah, he's never had to fight at the high octane pace of a bear gun. Go back and watch his fight. All of the one fight that he did, he got dropped. And then what did he do? He dialed it back and he changed the pace of the fight. And it did, you know, he ended up getting the guy out of it. You got to put me to sleep for me not for me to stop coming. Everybody knows that. And Johnny Bedford is by far one of the biggest, if not the biggest, 135 pound fighter in the division. And everybody saw he hit me as hard as he could. And you put me to sleep. You knock me down, but you didn't put me to sleep. <laughs> so we'll see though. It's gonna be a good fight. I'm 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 excited. I wanted to do a good fight. At the end of the night, I want to go back to my hotel room and look at my face and see a couple of lumps and look at my hands and see a bit of swelling and be like, damn right, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but maybe where they're not both broken, like in the first fight there, like maybe with the punching the sand and stuff like that, you've galvanized the hands where that's not happening. Like maybe it's just sore more than broken kind of thing. Um, so the bones have, um, what is the word? I don't even know what the medical word is. But they pretty much like healed in their awkward place, which is, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. My hands don't hurt or anything like that, but it's different than it was when I first started when I hit them. As you can feel, some of the knuckles are not setting the way they originally set in my hand. <laughs> so it hits you a little different than a normal hand would hit you. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but when I'm practicing, I, I love it. It just allows me to hit guys in, in, in different ways and unique ways. Add a little bit more to my arsenal. It's almost like having weaponized weapons. You know, everybody's got a fist, and you can turn your fist this way or that way or whatever. Well, I've had so many fights, and I've just placed two of my knuckles to the point where I can turn my hand a certain way, and my knuckles are going to hit you differently than any other person. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but I call it variation punch. I'm, I'm giving away. I don't know how many people teach that or know about that that's something in the educated hands you know book we teach and punch variation and the the possibilities are endless and then when you have you know two knuckles that are kind of essentially sharpened and protruded in the opposite direction of each other <laughs> <laughs> it makes for an even better variating punch yeah I love the attention to detail there and we got to you know, get some lads signing up for the next seminar so they can pick up on the tips and everything. But it's always great getting to talk to you, Reggie. I appreciate the time, but I understand you're a 
busy guy. So I'm just curious if maybe there's anything you want to add as a parting thought as we're wrapping up, man. Um, man, I don't have my list of sponsors on me. I forgot to grab my wallet. But, um, I want to just give a shout out to all my sponsors. You guys know who you are. I'll definitely tag you in the post, you know. You shoot me the link for it, then. Um, and, <sighs> July. No, I mean, my bad. I want to say July. June 23rd. It's going down. I'm sorry, man. I trained. So let me tell you what my day was. I trained at weight training at 5.30 this morning to about 7. Went to work for like four hours, yelled at two people for not doing their job. <laughs> so then I had to do it for them. <laughs> I just, just was like over it. <laughs> um, came home, spent an hour with my family, went back to work to clean up some crap and then I went to the gym and I did two more hours of weight training and then we sat down and do our interview I'm grinding it so, um, but yeah it's going down man I'll just know that Reggie is coming to fight and he's coming to fight that's it everything else is water under the bridge it don't even matter he's coming for a good old fashioned this time and that's exactly what he's going to be so I hope he's ready yeah, well, the work ethic is huge, man. I, you know, follow you on social media and stuff like that. So can definitely attest to it. I mean, I feel like I get tired just watching your, you know, days go by and stuff like that. But I'm really looking forward to this upcoming fight here. And I imagine that's a shared sentiment across the entire bare knuckle community. And people can check that out at BKFC Fight Night Tampa 2, interim bantamweight title on the line July 23rd. And just really thanks for the time and insights, Reggie. Looking forward to this fight with Jared Grant. And hopefully you enjoy the rest of your night there, man. Thank you so much, Dylan. Uh, anytime you want to chop it up, man, hit me up. Shoot me an addy to um, me or my manager to one of our DMs. I'll send you a t-shirt, man. Yeah, no, for sure. I'll definitely send you all the appropriate info when it's live and everything like that. But, yeah, always fun getting to, you know, chop it up, man. And, yeah, really appreciate the time. Thanks so much. Yeah, have a great evening, man. Yeah, you too, man.